I'm too sick to be on camera because I decided to go down into a dark and damp catacomb in Paris where I probably contracted some 350 year old virus. But this extremely accurate animation of me will suffice. Today on Point Choices, we're making chicken fried rice. Now I know you're probably thinking, John, it's the holidays. Where's the butter stuffed cheese? Well, fried rice is a dish created from leftovers, which I'm sure a lot of us will be having over the next month. So get ready to never order Chinese takeout again because we're taking our fried rice to fancy levels done right at home. Starting out, we need some day old rice. So I did a mixture of jasmine and cow rose rice, one cup of each, and this is just the rice of my choice because I love the fragrance of the jasmine rice and the stickiness of the short grain cow rose. You can totally use a regular long white grain rice here if you'd like. The main thing is just washing it several times to the water runs clear. I usually put mine in a strainer over a bowl of water and just run cold water over it. And then I just pop these into my rice cooker using a one to one ratio of water to rice. And then after the rice was cooked, I allowed it to cool to room temperature to let the steam get off before I put it into a container and into the fridge overnight or at least for a few hours. It's going to help with the texture of our final product if we allow the rice to cool. And after all, this dish is based on leftovers. So now is the next day. We've got our rice ready. So let's do a quick marinade for our chicken. If you've ever been wondering, why does the chicken and fried rice have a different texture than other chicken, it's because of this very simple process. I use one large chicken breast for this, trim off any excess fat you see, and then we're going to cut this into strips down the grain and then into thin slivers against the grain. You'll be able to easily identify the direction the grain is going by just looking at the underside of the chicken breast. Get as much of the usable pieces of the chicken breast cut up and then we need to give it a little bath. Simply run your chicken under some cold running water and kind of press and squeeze it until the chicken is lighter in appearance. This is certainly easier over an actual sink, but for demonstration purposes, I'm doing it here on the counter. Now I want to clear something up. Today we're using Chinese soy sauce and not Japanese soy sauce. Kikamon is Japanese. So the two on the left are what we'll actually need here. Dark soy sauce has a lot of color, but very little flavor, and light soy sauce, sometimes just labeled as soy sauce, has lots of flavor, but very little color, so we'll need both. So to our newly light-skinned chicken, we'll add half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of cornstarch, one fourth teaspoon of kosher salt, one fourth teaspoon of MSG, half a teaspoon of light soy sauce, one teaspoon of any neutral oil of your choice, I'm using peanut oil here, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Mix everything together thoroughly and then let it marinate for at least 30 minutes or up to overnight. Next, we'll make a little sauce mixture and seasoning mixture for later. For the sauce mixture, we'll need half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of dark soy sauce, and two teaspoons of light soy sauce. Give that a mix and set aside so we can do our dry seasoning mixture, which is half a teaspoon of MSG, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and half a teaspoon of white pepper. Mix that up and set aside, and that's really the main prep. Some of the other stuff we'll need will be like two eggs scrambled and some vegetables, which today I'm going to go with the classic blend of finely diced white onion and carrot. I'm also adding in some frozen peas at the end. And you can do whichever vegetables you want, but I would advise that you get them diced up pretty good. Big chunks just won't cook evenly, and also it just doesn't make for a fun eating experience in my opinion. So to a hot walk over some hot heat and also get ready to turn them vents on and open the windows. We'll add in some safflower oil or any type of oil with a high smoke point. I like to add some around the edge of the wok and let it drip down and then swirl to coat. Pop the eggs in and add a little salt and pepper. Don't walk away because they will cook fast and don't worry if they get puffy on the sides. Once they begin to set, break them up with your spoon or spatula and then once cooked, set them aside into a bowl and wipe your wok down with a wet cloth. We're going to be doing a lot of cook and wipe to avoid burnt pieces of food being left in as well as doing ingredients individually. This gives everything enough space to get that good high heat searing. If you crowd your pan or wok, it's only going to steam things and slow down the cook process. And we really want that good browning on things like our chicken and vegetables to bring out some really awesome flavor. In the restaurants, they have these insanely high heat burners that can handle everything being dumped into the wok at the same time. But at home, we are limited. So this is the wok workaround. So our wok is back on high heat. And this is where I made a mistake because I should have cooked my chicken after the eggs, but I was an autopilot and did my onions and carrot. We want to cook our vegetables in the fawn that is left behind from the chicken to get some extra flavor, but I missed out on the opportunity at this point in time. Not the end of the world, of course. So we'll just cook our carrots and onions until the onions are beginning to turn translucent. Sometimes being a good cook is just learning how to fix a mistake. Get the vegetables out into the bowl with the cooked eggs, wipe out the wok, lay down some oil, and then get your chicken in and use the surface area of that hot wok to get all that chicken laid out and touching the surface. This ensures each piece gets a good searing. I don't have exact time 
times here because it could vary depending on what you're cooking on heat wise and also what you're cooking in. But with this chicken being sliced so thinly, it shouldn't take too long. We really just wanna get the chicken to the point where it's done, but don't overcook it because as you know, chicken breasts can become very dry and no one wants that stringy dryness in their mouth. Get it out the pan and set aside. I didn't wipe the wok out this time because that fawn left behind that chicken can be used in our rice. See, the world has been saved. So I add some more oil to the wok and then I'm using a little over two cups of that cooked rice we made from the day before. Get the rice spread out so it can make as much contact with the wok as possible. And it won't take long to warm this rice back up, which is essentially what we're doing here. Maybe a minute or so before I started stirring things up. Then I added in three cloves of minced garlic, which honestly should have been added in earlier with the vegetables towards the last 30 seconds of their cooking. But again, we can make up for it and add it to the rice cooking. It's no big deal. Mix all of that in and then once you begin smelling the garlic, it's time to add back in our friends from earlier. The chicken, the egg, the onion and carrot. Keep mixing things and if you find your rice is starting to burn a little bit, pop that heat down. After about 30 seconds or so, we'll take our sauce mixture and pour it around the edges of the wok to drip down into the rice. Letting it hit the wok first will kind of let it caramelize and bring out even more flavor from those soy sauces. Work the sauce mixture into the rice, then we'll add our seasoning mixture over the top of the rice and mix that in. Next, we'll stir in our frozen peas and make sure you're getting that spoon or spatula really underneath the rice as you're mixing so it's not just sticking and burning. Last thing we need is some Shaoxing wine. It's optional, but a really good way to separate your fried rice from others. I used about two teaspoons of Shaoxing wine. Kill the heat and then other optional things are finely diced green onions and a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. Taste your fried rice and see, does it need more salt? Maybe some pepper. You can always add soy sauce later when you're serving. And that's it, chicken fried rice done fancy restaurant style. The beauty of this is you can customize this to whatever your needs are and whatever you have available to cook with. Remember, this is based off of leftovers. So if you got some leftover turkey, throw that in the fried rice. You got some roasted vegetables, throw that in the fried rice. Everything can go. Hey everybody, this is Poor Choices Kitchen. We have a Patreon link down in the description. One dollar a month is all we ask for to help pay for these recipes during these here inflated times. And the total cook time for all of this, uh, once we got all the prep done in the marinade, was really just like 10 minutes. Like this is such an easy recipe to knock out on a weeknight. So I hope you enjoy and I will see you all back here next time.